show. I'm Noah Schlicksup, your host, and in this series, I'll be covering Jacksonville area sports from high school to the Jacksonville Jaguars. So without further ado, let's get into the first episode. Starting off here with the Cats Corner and the first edition of the Cats Corner, we're going to be reviewing the Jaguar season with local sportscaster Ben Murphy. I caught up with him earlier in the week, and this was pre-Urban Meyer hiring, by the way. And without further ado, let's check it out now. Uh, the Jaguars, tough season this year, 1-15, but a lot of bright spots. Of course, Trevor Lawrence is going to be coming to town here if they make the right pick. Um, and then, so, there, but there's more to the season. Uh, but other than James Robinson, what are some of the bright spots you've seen from the Jaguars in 2020-2021? I think you mentioned it. I think they do have some young talent, and I think the thing to look at is that this team can probably be good in two years. Um, I think that they've got the receiving core. They really – I mean, they could they could probably use some tight end help. I think maybe if if they could weasel their way and and somehow get uh, Kyle Pitts in the draft from Florida, if they could find a way to trade up with their second pick and use some ammo that they've got to get a tight end, that would be great. But you bright spots as far as this season goes, Lavisca Chenault, um, a, a second round wide receiver out of Colorado, has been very successful minus some injury uh, problems that he, he's dealt with, but. Um, when he's healthy, he's good. You pair him alongside DJ Chark, and you maybe can add one more piece, like I said, a tight end of this offense. You 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 can get this thing up and running pretty quickly with, with Trevor Lawrence. Um, I think in the second half of the season, we did like the improvement out of uh, Caleb on chase on. He struggled in the first half. I think he willingly admitted that he tried to do too much. But look, look man, they've got some young pieces, and uh, if they, it, as long as the next guy who comes in and puts this roster together doesn't – screw things up, they're going to be in the playoffs in a couple years. And Trevor Lawrence, of course, declaring for the NFL draft a couple days ago. Uh, what are your thoughts on him coming to Jacksonville? Finally, they get a quarterback. Uh, Shad Khan, the owner, talked to us on Monday. He said that's the one thing that this franchise has evaded is a franchise quarterback, which is pretty cool to hear that from the owner, that we know it and, and he's willing to admit it. Um, yeah, it's, it's about time. And they finally – I mean, this is not the worst Jags team that – I've seen in the last 10 years and it just happened to luck into the first overall pick. And it's funny how the cookie crumbles. Uh, again, I don't think I, this was the worst Jags team in the history of the franchise. And it just happened to be the one that, that stumbled into the, the one win. Thank you, Ben, again, for taking the time to do that. I really appreciate it. Now onto the Jacksonville athlete of the episode. And this is a pretty easy first pick. Mac Jones, former bull school quarterback in Jacksonville native, now Alabama quarterback just won a national championship over Ohio State. Mac completed 83% of his passes while throwing for nearly 300 yards. I caught up with Mac here earlier today to talk about the championship, him declaring for the draft yesterday, and more. Here it is. So um, Alabama, of course, just won the national championship. Um, and so explain, like, your – What's going through your head right now on the field? And I always wonder, you know, what you're thinking, you know, as the quarterback in the biggest game of the year. Yeah, I think, you know, it's something you kind of dream of. So when you're out there, it's kind of just like a video game. Um, you're out there with your teammates and um, you kind of get settled into the game and everything's just normal again. It's just a normal game. But winning it was definitely cool. Um, running on the field behind Coach Saban, getting picked up by Landon, um, our center. Yeah, that was pretty cool. Um, kind of just stuff you, you picture and dream about. So it all kind of just came to reality. And I wasn't actually as emotional as I thought I was going to be, like crying and stuff. But I definitely was, you know, after the game, um, pretty emotional. <laughs> so Jacksonville Athlete of the Episode is not the biggest honor you've won here as of late. <laughs> <laughs> you also won the Davey O'Brien Award for the best quarterback in college football. And you were a Johnny Unitas uh, Golden Art. You won that award, too. Yeah. Uh, and not to mention the Heisman finalists. So yeah. um, this really shows your growth as a player. And how did you get to where you are now? Yeah, I think it was just uh, a lot of hard work individually. And I don't like to talk about myself a lot, but I definitely had to put in a lot of work, a lot of hours that people didn't see. But um, at the same time, a lot of people helped me as well. So my coaches, teammates, friends, and family, um, you know, it's not a one-man crew, but – 
to get better individually, you got to put in the work in by yourself. And I think that's something that I did so that I could help out the team. So it's kind of, kind of like full circle, I guess you could say. And so you declared for the NFL draft yesterday. Congratulations on that. Thank you. <laughs> um, and so how are you prepping for the combine pro day and the draft in general? Yeah, so I'm going down to Mobile um, and working with David Morris, and then my old quarterback coach will be involved, Coach Joe Dickinson. Um, so we're kind of going to go down there, and then just we have a whole whole thing planned out from top to bottom, and I'm just looking forward to getting down there. Um, it's going to be it's going to be a lot of fun, but it's going to be a lot of grinding, and we just had a long season, so I got to uh, kind of build a schedule and figure out what's going to work for me. You know, when we just played this full SEC and Top top ten team season, pretty much. We got to be ready to kind of relax a little and then hit the road running. Always great catching up with Mac. Now on to the high school basketball recap, and I'll start off here with the games of the week. And same matchup for both boys and the girls. It is a boys girls doubleheader over at Bartram Trail High School, where Bartram Trail will be taking on the Creekside Knights. Girls game starts at 6 o'clock Eastern time, boys at 7.30 Eastern time. And these are going to be two good games. We'll start off with the girls here. Now, it's going to be interesting because they, the Creekside Lady Knights just keep on proving every single game. And last, last time against Bartram, it was real evenly matched until later on in the game where Bartram started nailing three balls and they were able to pull away. The key for Creekside here to stay in this game on the road is to be able to hit the three consistently. And this starts with Ellie Alderman, senior, and Mary Grace Walters, who is a sophomore. When those two get going from deep, they can be very dangerous. In her last game, Ellie Alderman hit three straight three-pointers on three straight possessions. That's outstanding. And that is how they're going to be able to keep this game close and keep themselves in it. Now for them, they've been in a lot of close games lately, but they haven't been able to finish them off. For them to finish this game off, they need to keep their composure down late, don't, late in the game, don't turn the ball over, and they need to make good, solid passes while hitting their free throws, too. That was key to their loss last week in overtime. As for the boys' game, it will be interesting to see how the Creekside Knights can try to slow down Elijah Cool. Now, Cool comes in 6'10 senior, averaging, get this, 16 points per game. Now, the Knights now have a full roster. They've dealt with some COVID issues on the team. They have a full roster back here tonight, including Jaden Westerkamp, Matt McCoy down low. They also get back their top defender, Jonathan Gupton. Now, it's going to be interesting because Cool, again, 6'10, they have Matt McCoy. Real aggressive down low football player. He's six six. They call him Baby Shack, and he is a rebound machine. Also very effective defensively down low, and also Westerkamp, who's also six six. Now those two will be key to shutting down Cool here tonight, which will be key to this game. Also for the Knights, getting Gupton back that's going to be huge because they Bartram has other kids who can hurt you, especially up top at the guard position. Getting a guard like Gupton back, a veteran defender who can really shut anybody down. The only question for Gupton, however, is if he's in game shape. He's been out since mid-December, so that could play a role here tonight. And the Knights will need him against a tough Bartram Trail Bears team. Now, I can't make any predictions for this game as I'll be calling it on NFHS Network. So make sure to tune in. Coverage starts at 6 o'clock Eastern time tonight. I'll be calling it with William Anderson and that will do it for our high school basketball recap and the episode. Thanks for tuning in. If you enjoyed this, be sure to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching. I'm Noah Schlicksip signing off till next time.